where the nuclear weapons were stored, saw these strange lights out of Coyote Canyon, which was east of the, of the complex, the nuclear weapons complex, and something landed. And so I conducted that investigation, which was extensive investigation. I'm Richard Doty, um, I was assigned as a special agent with the Air Force Office of Special Investigations at Kirtland Air Force Base. I was a counterintelligence officer at the base, and uh, during my time there, my first few months there, I was briefed into a special access program. What was that all about? What, what, what actually happened? So we conducted an investigation, not only us, but National Security Agency, just to make sure this guy wasn't a Russian spy, he wasn't, you know, doing all these things. It's complex, and something landed. And he had all this sophisticated, now he was, a, he was a physicist. He had all this sophisticated equipment that was pointed towards the base, and that's what we were concerned about. So we conducted an investigation on him, not only us, but National Security Agency, because he actually tapped in, and this was classified one time, I don't believe it is class anymore, classified anymore. He was tapped in to a National Security Agency, an NSA project that was going on on base. And which he shouldn't have been able to figure it out, but he did. Very smart guy. Thought all this up on his own. So we had to figure out how we're going to get him away from what he was doing. And so we started slowly convincing him, or, or not really convincing him, but just giving him the idea that this might be just UFOs, extraterrestrials. And he ran with that. So we had to figure out how we're going to get him go crazy, get him away from what he was doing, get him go crazy. We started slowly convincing him, get him go crazy, just giving him the idea that he can go crazy. This might be just he can go crazy. This might be just UFOs. I should trust you. Hmm. Wonder why he can go oh. crazy. It's just it's just a coincidence. If we briefly explain Nikola Tesla's idea of his that sets up a global resonant grid that can be utilized for Nikola Tesla's not dispersive concentrated energy projector. I know I had a lot of criticism about he can go crazy. I didn't have to, I, that I fed him all this disinformation. It wasn't a very difficult for me. So we had to figure out how we're going to really convince him it's UFOs. Give me the idea that this might be just sexual trustees. And I tried to explain to him that what he saw was a global resonant grid. Some of what he was seeing was, uh, he took pictures of strange looking global resonant grid lights and orbs. Saw these strange lights out of Coyote Canyon, which was east of the, of the complex, the nuclear weapons complex, and something landed, which uh, led into the Paul Benoit incident. This complex. What was that all about? What, what, what actually happened around that time where uh, one of your security officers saw a disc? Right. Uh, Tesla turbines for direct propulsion as stealth trolling motors and auxiliary power units to power onboard electronics. Such a prime mover possesses many advantages, both constructive and operative. It is simple, light, compact, subject to but little wear, and exceptionally easy to manufacture as small clearances and accurate milling work are not essential to good performance. In operation, it is reliable. There would be no valves, sliding contacts, or troublesome veins. It is almost free of windage, largely independent of nozzle efficiency, and suitable for high as well as for low fluid velocities and speeds of revolution. So we had to figure out how we're going to get him away from what he was doing. We started slowly convincing him this might be just UFOs, extraterrestrials. It, it actually, it, it, something landed. One of your security officers saw a disc. Right. 
Now why does this matter? When built right, testers having a motor fluid with the viscosity of a liquid means it will get an insane amount of torque even at low RPM, and it wouldn't even need tight disc spaces because of the thickness of the supercritical fluid. Supercritical fluids like those coming out of a nuclear reactor cooling system have an added bonus of having the thick viscosity of a liquid but can also expand like an elastic gas in a turbine Brayton cycle. One of the security officers from Sandia Laboratories, they had their own security, was checking it was driving around on a graveyard shift sometime after 2 o'clock in the morning and saw a craft land at a, at a uh, bunker. But the, the bunker didn't have anything in it, but the craft landed. And when it landed, all the electronics in that vehicle shut off. His engine shut off, his portable radio stopped transmitting, his portable radio in the vehicle stopped. For, for as long as that craft was on the ground, when the craft took off, everything came back on. This plane is especially designed to survive an EMP. So I investigated that. All we found was that something who landed there. It was on base radar. Uh, no radar. And that HVDC is then fed directly into the tower. Between these terminals, what Tesla explains is the limitation of the belt electrostatic generator is not being able to put, actually fully move a charge because it's limited by the dipole moment of the belt that they can only store so many charges as the dipole moment and the rotation of the dipole moment in the non-conductive belt. But when using a gas in this circulating system, so you use the HVDC to actually be able to dump the charges into to the air because the air has is made of molecules and those molecules have electron orbitals around each of the atoms in those molecules within the gas that's used in this circulating system you can then actually shove electrons into a higher state in those electron orbitals by doing so you can actually use each atom as a charge carrier to transport the electron or the charge up to the upper terminal and by doing so you can move a lot more charges per cycle in turn means you can can move a lot more power at any given time. Did you know that the Tesla turbine is reversible in not just one way, but two? Let me tell you how that is and why that's an important feature to have. The Tesla turbine is a revolutionary piece of machinery that is designed to produce mechanical and electrical power from the kinetic energy of a flowing fluid. But what does it mean when we say it's reversible? Firstly, without any complex means like a reversing gear, the turbine can be spun in the opposite direction. All that is needed is for a switching mechanism to change the direction in which the fluid comes spiraling in through the distack, and spiraling in through the distack. Normal bladed turbines can't do this due to the blade geometry design. Secondly, the Tesla turbine is also said to be reversible because it can work like a centrifugal pump or compressor. Instead of using a fluid to spin the discs, spin the discs, the rotor can actually be spun to propel the fluid along with the discs as they rotate. Nice check there. F to be able to move this that much power up, you can obviously only move so much through here, but the Tesla compressor is what actually transport the charge up to the terminal. Now, this was the improvement he did for actually being able to do this system by improving the power output from regular electrostatic generators. <clears throat> and we had also at Kirtland, we had a uh, at that point, it was at that time it was pretty uh, a secretive unit that uh, scanned every single frequency that was could possibly be generated in and around the base radio frequencies. Contrary to popular misconception, Nikola Tesla's actual wireless transmission system did not rely on transmitting energy through the air using feelings. Here, it's about objective reality. So I don't want to assume anything nefarious. But did you just give me the idea that this might be just UFOs, extraterrestrials? This fact undermines your claims and assumptions and conclusions. That's how science works. Just because you do some good stuff doesn't mean everything you ever did is going to be great. What can happen if you're a fan of a subject, let's say. It's a counterintelligence officer. Expert, let's call it. It's possible to... Not really convincing him, but just give me the idea that this might be just... UFOs, extraterrestrials. But not enough about that subject to know that it's all cover for Nikola Tesla's technology. You're wrong. He was talking about moving radio, radio waves. To become an expert, you can't just sit in an armchair and say, I was a counterintelligence officer. Don't take this in the wrong way. It requires looking through journals. But now I've had enough. That's what we have learned is the we do things always your way. I 
Nikola Tesla's actual wireless transmission system did not rely on transmitting energy through the air using radio waves. Instead, he proposed a system that leveraged the natural conductive properties of the Earth. I'm going to read you just my opening line here. This is where we are. So I thought, it's too, it's just, makes too much sense to be, be a, a fantasy or hoax. So then I thought, well, these guys making this up or what? Well, then the security police inside Manzano, they interviewed them separately, and they told me the exact same story. Major Ernie Edwards, who was the commander of the 1608 Security Police Squadron, the, the, the security, Air Force Security Police that guarded Manzano, came to me and said, I got a phone call from a guy by the name of Paul Benowitz. He lives right outside the base. It was in Four Hills, which is a housing community just on the other side of, of the base, perimeter. He told me he start, he's seen all sorts of strange lights around Manzano. And so I started checking into it, and we found out that Paul Benowitz owned a business right outside the main gate of, of Kirtland, uh, Thunder Scientific Laboratories. They made humidity sensors for submarines. So he had a government contract and he had security clearance. He said, Paul Benowitz. He had a government contract and he had security clearance. He said, he had a government contract and he had security clearance. The Paul Benowitz owned a business right outside the main gate of, of Kirtland, a Thunder Scientific Laboratories. They made humidity sensors for submarines. So I went and paid him a visit, asked him about what he saw. And he started telling me all sorts of stories about what he saw and what he did. He said, I was a counterintelligence officer, Paul Benowitz. He had a government contract and he had security clearance. The Paul Benowitz owned a business, Thunder Scientific Laboratories. And this was classified at one time. I don't believe it is class anymore. It's classified anymore. And he started telling me all sorts of stories about humidity sensors for submarines. The stories. And which he shouldn't have been, but he did. Very smart guy. So uh, we investigated, but we could never find anything regarding that craft. But shortly after that, he eventually uh, went crazy. and and he died some, some years later, but Paul thought a lot of this up on his own. Hmm, I wonder why. A Thunder Scientific oh, Laboratories. It's just, it's just a coincidence. Come up with whatever theory you if want. If we though. briefly explain Nikola Tesla's idea of his that sets up a global resonant grid that can be utilized for measuring any ship's location anywhere. He shouldn't have been able to figure it out, but he did. Very smart guy. Quick lesson in Nikola Tesla's multi-point antenna transmission. Check this out. With multiple humidity sensors for submarines. We can create different alternating current wavelengths of electron charges oscillating within the ground. Additionally, each wavelength can be driven at whatever frequency we desire. Paul. Now, imagine a hexagonal array of antennas. No, go bigger. But the size of a city. Wrap the whole world in it. No, nah, wait, 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 wait. Let's take a step back. Imagine the electron charges in the ground oscillating like a, like a drum head up and down. We can create different wavelengths or we can create different frequencies. We can create different resonances with different nodes, different anti-nodes. The strings of electric charges in the ground will exhibit a similar phenomenon as the resonant harmonics of a guitar string. When you hold the one half point of a guitar string and let go, it will continue that same wavelength because it's a resonant harmonic of the guitar string's whole bass note. Analogously, when we use the hexagonal array to force wavelengths into the ground that are harmonics of the Earth's geometry, we get a similar effect. Each of these humidity sensors for submarines antennas are like the paddles on the walls of a wave pool. Individually controlled, we can create many different patterns and resonances. Hmm, I wonder why? A Thunder Scientific oh. Laboratories. It's just, it's just a coincidence. If we...
I didn't have to, it wasn't very difficult for me to convince him what he was seeing. He just, he just told me, it's UFOs. Years later, I became friends with him. Years later, after I got out, he still owned it. I tried to explain to him that what he saw wasn't, but he would never believe me. Thanks for watching. Come up with whatever theory you want. Lights and orbs.